Hi, this is Dr. Tony Cooper. Just a reminder, this is not a substitute for medication or counseling. If you're having thoughts of harming yourself or another person, or if this material triggers you, please contact your doctor or a mental health specialist to discuss your concerns. You can find my audio books, self-help books, and devotional books on Amazon. My videos are on YouTube, and you can listen to my podcast, Life Without Baggage, on your favorite platform. There tends to be styles that we develop in our coping. Some of it is biological. Some of it is the reaction to uh, people and situations around us. So what I want to do is contrast a passive style, a proactive style, and the active style. Now, when I say proactive, a person who is proactive, this is our ideal. When, they, when there's a stress or a personal concern or a relational concern, they're able to um, take initiative when it's appropriate. They're able to step back and kind of take a look at things when it's appropriate. They have self-confidence, but they're also able to uh, hear other people and take in input. They know how to pick their battles versus avoid things or take on everything. And they take responsibility for their own happiness. They're able to solve versus just uh, react to problems. And they can do it in a calm, respectful way. So that's our ideal. Now, a passive style tends to be underreactive to personal stresses, to relational stresses. They tend towards avoiding conflict. And the active style tends to overreact to stresses, challenges, or frustrations. So as I'm using these terms, there's no judgment attached to these terms. Um, there are good things about being more, a little more aggressive or dominant. There's good things about being sort of low key and a little bit more go with the flow. But when people get stuck in one mode, then there's going to be problems show up either professionally, financially, um, in their personal relationships, sometimes all of the above, sometimes even in cooperating in their health care for medical issues. So again, we tend to have a particular style some of it's biological, but we can get stuck in one of these modes. That you're not able to kind of move back and forth smoothly in your personal life. You're going to be more prone to depression, to anxiety, to defensiveness when someone approaches you with input, to self-pity, or losing your confidence when something happens. More prone to having chronic unresolved conflicts in your personal life. And again, more stuck in either avoidance or lots of conflict. Now, none of us find that perfect balance and we develop these styles, like I said, through biological tendencies. And let me mention, some people are able to flow a little bit back and forth in their professional life and this only shows up in their personal life. Uh, people are interesting that way. So our biological tendencies, family patterns where there's violence, anger, abuse, neglect, or addictions, we can get stuck in one role or stuck in one way of coping. Also, sometimes we adopt uh, more of a personality like one of our parents who maybe was stuck in a role or stuck in one way of coping. It can also happen if we're excessively sheltered. We can uh, develop the idea where we wait on other people to solve or manage our, our lives and our concerns, any areas of dissatisfaction. That can be an employer or a partner or a doctor or the government where there's not the balance of trusting myself to be able to be proactive and make a difference in my own life. Another aspect of being out of balance is that it's very easy to let other people define us or 
have undue influence in affecting our moods and our behavior and our decisions. Unfortunately, the more out of balance we are in these areas, we are also more prone then to develop addictive behaviors, whether it's a relationship addiction, addiction to a substance, um, over achievement and uh, work. So it's important to work towards that healthy balance that we all need to work on. So what do you do to change? So I have a few suggestions. First of all, recognize what your tendency is. Be honest with yourself about where you tend to land on this spectrum, where you tend to be out of balance. Consider the input of other people rather than just become defensive. Now that doesn't mean everybody's input is accurate. Sometimes there's a kernel of accuracy, but um, the healthier we are, we can kind of weigh what the other person is saying without letting it destroy our confidence or without going into a lot of anger, but just kind of calmly recognize what fits and what doesn't. It's a good idea to journal your internal responses to problems or stress or conflict. Be honest with yourself about what goes on inside of you. Do you become really hurt or angry or disappointed? Or do you go into self-pity or shame or guilt? These reactions are real. And don't be harsh with yourself, but try to understand, okay, Why am I having such an intense reaction to this? There's always a reason. So look for the source where these overreactions or underreactions come from. They usually start early in life and uh, they're usually repeated over and over until it becomes part of how we think life works. And again, none of us see things 100% accurately. And I would also encourage you to examine your expectations of yourself and your expectations of other people. Some of it may be accurate. Some of it may need some adjustment. I'm going to make some suggestions also for related videos. There are some psychological videos that will assist you in coping uh, strategies and improving your coping skills and helping you learn some other additional tools for your coping skills. So I have those listed here. Also, for those of you who want spiritual um, resources, I have some other videos listed that will help you draw on your faith to help you in transforming some of the ways that you react. So I'd like to pray for you now. Lord, I just pray that you would help this person have compassion for themselves of how they have developed any imbalances in their personality or in their coping style that isn't working for them. I pray that you would help them see where these roots are so that they can begin to remove any unnecessary barriers in their self-confidence, in their relationships, in their approach to uh, the concerns of life. I pray you would bless them, affirm them, and give them courage to take one step into a more positive and flexible way of coping. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. This is Dr. Tony Cooper. Thanks for listening. If this helped you, check out my other videos on YouTube, my books on Amazon, or check out my website to find out about speaking engagements.